Hey everyone, welcome to this video and today I'm going to show you how to build your own MCP server and then connect it to your cursor ID. So before I jump into the demo, I quickly want to give you an overview of what we're building. So the MCP host that we have is our cursor ID where we have an MCP client running. We're going to connect this client to the MCP server that we are going to build. So it's a single file implementation where it will do everything in just 30, 35 lines of code. I'll show you in a bit like how it's done. Then our server has two tools. One is a link up web search tool that enables deep web research. And we also have a llama index rag tool, which is implemented using llama index workflows that enables you to do rag over any specified directory. So it's like having a perplexity AI like experience right from your cursor ID, wherein you can do deep web research and you can also ground the generation of your agent based on the, a particular directory using the rag tool. So without any further ado, let's jump into the demo. Okay. So before I start the demo, if you're new here, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also hit the like button so that it gives me a message that I should be creating more videos like this. Thank you so much. So now I'm in my cursor ID and, uh, as you can see, all the code is just under uh, 35 lines of code. And in this, we have two tools. One is a web search tool that is implemented using LinkUp. And then we also have a rag tool that is implemented using Llama index workflows. I'll also go over the details of uh, each of these things, like how they work. But before that, I would like you to show that how you can connect this to your cursor MCP client. So all you need to do is to go to cursor, go to settings and inside that we have cursor settings and there you would find an option for MCP. Next, you just need to click on add a new MCP server. So you need to provide a name for your server, which is, uh, let's say, so I'm calling it as Twitter demo and uh, you also need to specify a command that how you can, you know, start this server. So. It's a fairly simple command. I'm using UV. If you're not already using UV, I would recommend that you start doing so. It's a really great uh, package manager. And then you specify the directory where exactly uh, your server is uh, located. So in this case, uh, I've given the complete path to my directory and then a run command. So it's just like uh, a Python run server.py command. So this would start our server and also connect it with the client. So let's click on add. All right, so now it's connected and as we can see, it already shows us that uh, what tools are available. So we have a web search tool and we have a rag tool. So once you have this connected, we can go to a new chat session. And so once you're in the chat session, you need to make sure that uh, you are using the agent mode because agents have ability to use all sorts of tools, whether they are custom built or whether they are MCP. So once you are in the agent mode, you can start asking any questions. So let's, uh, Ask the first question and uh, so my question is regarding a recent match that happened a couple of days ago uh, between two teams in the Indian Premier League. So it's just a cricket league that uh, is played every year in India. So this is something that would need web search. Otherwise, uh, it's not possible for any LLM to know like what has recently happened due to their knowledge cutoff. I'll also specify that uh, use MCP tools and click send. Right, as you can see, it is uh, saying that uh, calling MCP tool and it also specifies the exact tool or the method name that we have in the server.py, which is web search. So it will run this tool. So we have some initial result. And uh, yeah, so we also have a final coherent response where it says that uh, Chennai Super Kings or CSK beat Mumbai Indians by four wickets in the IPL 2025 match. So it has all the details. So basically what I meant to show you is that uh, we are able to successfully call the web search tool through our cursor ID. So now it's time to uh, test out the second tool, which is a rag tool. And as you can see here that we have a rag tool. And for the sake of this demo, I am grounding all of the generation for this rag on this particular directory, wherein I have uh, a particular paper called uh, deepseek.pdf. But in your case, like you can add any sort of uh, custom knowledge base or any document that is private to you that you want uh, your cursor ID to have access to. So that can be added here. So let's, uh, get to the chat and uh, ask it so 
So I'm asking it, how is DeepSeek R1 trained? Use MCP tools. Let's see how it works. Right, so it is automatically able to identify that uh, it needs to use the RAG tool and it is able to identify by looking at uh, the comment that I added over here. So I mean, you can specify this to be anything. Uh, so let's say your directory has uh, documents related to employee onboarding or maybe like uh, your financial documents. So you can specify all that uh, thing in the, this uh, description for this method and our agent would be automatically able to understand it. So as you can see, it successfully called the RAG tool and uh, we have a final answer on how DeepSeek R1 was trained. So it uh, gives a detailed uh, explanation based on the paper that we provided, like what are all the different stages and what exactly happened in them. So yes, the idea is to show you that uh, now my cursor ID can have access to my custom knowledge base, which can be anything that I provide in a certain directory. And it can also do deep web research. Now that you've seen that uh, how it actually works, it's time to do a code walkthrough. So again, I'm in my server.py script, which implements my MCP server. So in order to do this, uh, I'm using MCP's Python SDK, right? And uh, so you can create this server using this fast MCP, and uh, you can specify the name of your server. And after that, uh, we are going to use a linkup client. So this linkup client is something that uh, lets us do deep web research. And if you see uh, the implementation in the tool, so it just takes uh, a query, the depth. So basically, if you want to do a standard search or you want to do deep web research, so all of this can be you know changed or toggled with just a single word. So instead of standard, if I do deep, then it would do deep web research, just like uh, you know what OpenAI is offering and what other uh, web search tools are offering in this space. And uh, next is our RAG tool. So in order to build this RAG tool, I have used uh, Llama index workflows. So I'll show you the code for the same as well. So this is all the code that we need to implement uh, a RAG workflow using Llama index workflows. But uh, to better understand this, I would want to show you an image of uh, how this workflow would look like. So you can easily, uh, you know, once you create a workflow, Llama index offers a functionality wherein you can, uh, you know, or you can Float all the different paths that a workflow can take and either you can save it as an HTML or a PNG so that you can easily visualize what exactly is happening in each of the steps. So there's a start event that says that, okay, this is what triggers our workflow. So every time a start event can go to like multiple steps. So in this case, our workflow has uh, two entry points. One is an ingest entry point wherein you can use this to add new knowledge to our RAG system. And then there's a retrieve uh, step. Wherein, or this is another entry point wherein user can uh, come up with a query and get answers to their query based on the knowledge base or based on the documents that have been already ingested. So once we have this uh, ingest event, once the ingestion is finished, we have a stop event that says that, okay, you need to stop the workflow here. And we say that done. Okay, this uh, path is done. You have already successfully ingested your knowledge base. But in case like if user comes up with a new query, so it will be using the retrieve step and uh, it will be using the second entry point of our workflow. So once you retrieve, it will retrieve all the relevant nodes or the context from the knowledge that is already present. And then we have a synthesis step. So in the synthesis step, it is going to use the query as well as the retrieve documents, which is used as a context, and it will send it to the LLM. And then LLM produces the final response. And this is how uh, the workflow works. And I can quickly show you an example of uh, this, how you can run it. So as you can see in this uh, main method, so we create an instance of the workflow. We start the ingestion first, right? So we would ingest all the uh, documents that are present in the data directory. And uh, after that, we are going to do a retrieval or we are going to fire up a query and get the response to it. So if I run it, uh, yeah, so we have the results here, right? So this is how our workflow works. And similarly, we are calling it uh, in the server that we are defined. So first, whenever the server starts, we make sure that the documents uh, from the directory are ingested and ready for search and retrieval. Uh, so we call the ingest step of our workflow first, right? And then once we are inside the RAG tool, uh, we get a user query that would be coming from uh, our agent inside our cursor ID. And this query would be received here and it would run the workflow against this query and fetch a relevant answer to it, which is again going to be displayed here. As you can see here, this is what we did last time. So now the moral of the story is, it's fairly simple to give your cursor ID access to any sort of tool in this world. Maybe it can be a vector database, maybe it's a RAG tool, or maybe like it's an external API that you're calling, 
or a tool like uh, linkup that can enable deep web research in just a few lines of code and your cursor id can get access to it so mcps are really powerful and what makes them really powerful is they provide a unified interface on how your agents can interact with the external world and it's fairly easy to integrate them with the ids like cursor cloud desktop and you can also build your custom client on the need basis so i have shared all of this code in the next tweet and uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in another one thanks for watching